Hey, what's up guys? It's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're letting BuzzFeed decide if I'm a real bookworm. If you find yourself enjoying this video then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out, and if you're new here and would like to see more of me then please subscribe. So BuzzFeed has a couple of like book lovers quizzes and today I'm doing one called only bookworms have done at least 24 of 36 of these things. Basically you tick off all the things that you've done and then I think it tells you like how much of a bookworm you are. Now I would consider myself to be quite a bookworm, you know, I'm sitting here in a room with like 700 books, I'm like weirdly nerdy about books, I just like books, right, it's not even just that I like reading, like I love books, I love touching them and holding them and feeling them and I love the physical thing of words being bound between two pieces of cardboard, it's just, I love books. So let's see if BuzzFeed agrees. Let's see if they're going to validate my existence or if I'm actually just a poser who's been lying to you guys all this time. Tick off all the things you've done. Had a book hangover where you didn't feel ready to read a new book because you were still emotionally invested in the last one you finished. Oh, so many times! Felt obliged to keep reading a book despite having found it boring. So yeah, I've definitely done that, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Like, I'm all for DNFing books now. Brought a book to a party or any other social event just in case. Yep. Story time. When I was, I don't know, must have been 13 and twi the Twilight movie came out, I got the first book for Christmas and read it and then New Moon was out of stock everywhere and I ordered a copy from my local independent bookstore and they called me to go and get it the same day that I was going to a friend's house for a sleepover. I think it, it was in the school holidays and it was a Friday and they called me at like two o'clock on Friday afternoon and said, hey, we've got your book. And I was 13, I obviously couldn't drive and I was going to my friend's house that evening and we passed the mall it was in to get to my friend's house. So no one was gonna take me out to get the book then they were just like, no, we'll go and get it on the way to your friend's house. So I went in, got the book, and then my mom wanted to take it home with her because she was like, you can't take this book to your friend's house, you can't go to your friend's house and read. I resolutely put it into my little school tog bag with all my clothes and my pajamas, insistent that if everyone else went to sleep before me, I would start reading my book, and we all went to sleep around the same time, and I didn't read my book, but I did have it with me just in case. Seriously considered joining a book club, like all the time. Actually joined or started a book club, yes, twice in my life. The first one we started and then never had a meeting with, well never had a meeting for, and the second one we was actually with one of the same people as the original book club but that one did actually get off the ground and we did have some meetings and that was fun and I would actually like to start a book club for this channel but yeah, gonna talk about that on Twitter. Set yourself a reading target at the beginning of the year. Only every year since, like, I discovered Goodreads. <laughs> Exceeded your reading target before the year was over. That must have happened. I don't rem- it hasn't happened for the last year, but it definitely has happened before. Spent over half an hour browsing in a bookshop. Yep. Yeah. Spent over an hour browsing in a bookshop. For sure. So there's a bookstore chain in South Africa called Exclusive Books, and the one in- the town I lived in growing up was in a shopping centre, or is in a shopping centre, that used to have movies. So if I was going to watch a movie then normally before or after I'd spend a good chunk of time browsing in exclusive books because everywhere else in the centre closed at 6 but exclusive books stayed open until like 10 or 11. So if you went to an 8 o'clock movie and you came out at like half past 9, quarter to 10, you could still go and browse in the bookshop and I used to really enjoy doing that. Also there was a pizza restaurant next door which we would often go to if, like if it was a birthday because I like pizza and literally like we would go and sit down and order and then my sister and I would often just leave my parents at the table and go and browse in the bookshop until our food arrived. Bought more than two books on a short trip. Yes. Spent ages deliberating over which books to take on holiday with you. Yep and then gotten more books at the airport anyway. I don't think I've ever bought a book at the airport. No, I have, but it wasn't pre-holiday, it was post-holiday, so I don't think I can take that off. I went to Cape Town a couple years ago. I'm in Cape Town now, but 
I came to visit Cape Town a few years ago and I wanted to buy Girl Boss by Sofia Amoruso and I went to again exclusive books in Cavendish and they didn't have stock but the airport store had stock so I was flying back to PE a couple days later and I bought it in the airport but that was at the end of my trip so it doesn't really count. Sniffed an old book? Yes. Sniffed a new book? Yes. Been bitterly disappointed by the movie version of a book you like? Have I? Yes, I guess. I've now grown to the point where I can appreciate books and films as different art forms and different entities and while I do appreciate it when films stay quite true to books, I also, now that I understand more about both mediums of storytelling, acknowledge that there are some things that work really well in book form but just don't translate well on screen. It's it just, it's, it's not always possible to adapt every part of something faithfully and sometimes changes have to be made for the sake of making a quality movie or a quality TV adaptation. That being said, that hasn't always been <laughs> my point of view and there are definitely films that I've watched that I've been pissed that they left out, like a tiny little nuance thing where now I'm like, okay, but even though it's not like an accurate adaptation, it's still an enjoyable piece of art and piece of work in its own right. So, but yeah, it has, it has happened. I've just grown out of it. Avoided watching an adaptation just so it wouldn't sully the memory of the book for you. I don't think I've ever done that. There are some adaptations that I've just never bothered to watch, like I still haven't watched Paper Towns or Looking for Alaska, but not because I think they'll sell you the memory of the book, I just don't really have any interest in, in them anymore. Judged someone for organising their books aesthetically rather than practically. So this was going to be a hard pass for me because I believe, you know, organise your books however you want. If rainbow shelves work for you and you can remember exactly what colour every book is, like go have those rainbow shelves that look beautiful. I'm all for that. I like having my shelves arranged somewhat aesthetically, so like there's there's some sense of order, but I also want them to look good. Not that they look great now because I just have too many books for them to look nice, but yeah, like I I have no problem with people organizing their books aesthetically. However, I cannot accurately say no to this question because I did once see someone had turned all their books spine in because they had like a really minimalist style home and they didn't want their bookshelves to be a distraction. So I still find that kind of weird, like I don't judge people for doing it now because to each their own if you can remember what all those books are, like props to you because I would never be able to. So I'm, I'm gonna have to say a, a big ol' yes to that. However, two more things I want to say on that. One is in A Discovery of Witches, Matthew has like really really old fragile books and he has them spine in on his bookshelf and then because he's like 400 years old he has really nice like calligraphy handwriting and then on the, the, the edge of the book he's written their titles in like really nice calligraphy and I love that idea but I don't have nice enough handwriting to do it so yeah that's the one thing and for two I really don't like that they've put this as making you more of a real bookworm because judging people for their decisions is never a good thing to do and also telling people that they are not real readers because they want their bookshelves to look pretty is such a shitty thing to do, like we need to get rid of this kind of gatekeeping, can people not? If you can remember where all your books are, like there is very little organisational structure to my shelves, things are broadly organised by genre, like my TBR is broadly organised by genre and I can remember at least vaguely where most things are, so like there's can people just not like can can we stop being dicks and being gatekeepers and just let people enjoy their books the way that they want to enjoy their books gonna get off my soapbox now run out of space for all your books yeah 
so I had to stack some on the floor or wedged horizontally into any bookshelf gaps. Yeah. Dreamed of having a library at home. Uh-huh. Stayed up until 3am so you could finish a book. So many times. Been so immersed reading a book on a bus or train that you've missed your stop. No, but I've probably come close. <laughs> Felt so disappointed by a book's ending that you've ranted about it to someone. Oh, poor Alan has to deal with this all the time. Or looked up online to see if other people also hated the ending. Yep. Yep, also me. Struggle to come up with a definitive answer when someone asks you what your all-time favourite book is. Yep, I have three that I give. Uh, yeah. Been moved to near tears because a character you loved died. Or oh, actual tears. If we're going to be all about gatekeeping BuzzFeed, why not just gatekeep all the people that can't cry and make that full-on cried because a character you love died? Gotten upset towards the end of a good book because you didn't want the journey to be over. Yeah. Seen someone reading a book you like in public and wanted to strike up a conversation with them about it. Um, yes. I haven't done it, but I have wanted to. Had a bookshop loyalty card. Oh, yes. Ended up on an emotional roller coaster because the cover and blurb of a book you bought were actually very misleading. Yes. <laughs> Been annoyed when a book you like was re released with an uglier cover. I have not yet collected all of the Akatar books and I do not like the new covers, and I am supremely annoyed that one, not only might I miss the opportunity to buy them all in the editions I want. And, but two, the next books that come out are probably going to be the new style, which I don't like. And I'm going to end up either with all being ugly or half the books and covers I like and half the books not matching. Bought multiple editions of a book because the covers were so nice. Yep, yep, Alan has to deal with that as well. Reread the same book over and over again instead of starting a new one you bought more recently. Owned a tote bag or badge proclaiming your love of books. I own lots of bookish tote bags like four specific books. I have a books on my bag one, I guess, that counts. Felt nervous lending someone a book in case it gets ruined. Yes, and in fact, I used to put such strict disclaimers in place when I lent books to people that most people would just be like, no, it's fine. <laughs> people would ask to borrow a book and I'd bring it to school for them and say like, here it is, you can borrow it, but like, please don't crack the spine. This is how you should hold it. Like, please don't mess it up please keep it in something to keep it safe and then they would normally be like it's fine I don't want to borrow it anymore but liked someone a hundred times more after finding out they read and enjoyed a book you recommended to them yes <laughs> I got 33 out of 36 on the list you are most definitely a bookworm you love to read and your collection of books is massive they don't know that because there was nothing about owning lots of books you could spend hours in a bookshop and spend a lot of your spare time reading or looking up what books to read next. Well, no shit, BuzzFeed. <laughs> I shouldn't be so dismissive, but like, <laughs> I have such issues with BuzzFeed on principle, but I'm so addicted to it. Like, I'm such a hypocrite. So that's it. My existence has been validated by BuzzFeed and I am officially a bookworm. Thank you for coming on this emotional roller coaster with me. I am so grateful that I had your love and your support in this difficult time because like how stressful just imagine if BuzzFeed had told me that I wasn't a real bookworm because I haven't bought multiple copies of my favorite books or because I arrange my bookshelves by color like can you imagine the emotional trauma I would have felt so thank you thank you for your support your love your kindness I appreciate you all so much let me know in the comments if you are a real bookworm I'll leave a link to the BuzzFeed quiz in the description in case you want to take it as well, just to find out if, you know, you are officially a real bookworm, because you couldn't possibly just, like, love books and therefore be a bookworm, right? You have to have it validated by BuzzFeed, who, as we all know, are, like, the guardians of all books and all knowledge. Thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed it, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In the description, along with the link to the BuzzFeed quiz, you'll find links to all of my social media, which include my Facebook, Goodreads, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as my blog, and have links to my web store, my Redbubble store, and my coffee account if you'd like to support me on any of those. But that is it from me today. I think I need to take a break from filming because I'm talking a mile a minute, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye! My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep, and work. I am not boring, I just stick to what I know.